In this video, I'm talking all about tracking your basal body temperature in order to predict ovulation. Hi, my name is Susan and this is The Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. So this is one video in a series of videos that I'm doing talking about the different ways that you can track your ovulation. This is all about basal body temperature. So what is basal body temperature? Basically, basal body temperature is your body's temperature when you are completely at rest. As women, when it comes to our menstrual cycles, we are continually going through these hormonal changes month after month. And one of these things that, one of the things that hormonal changes will do to us is when we ovulate, we will get a spike in our basal body temperature. So when you are tracking your basal body temperature or BBT for short, um, what you are looking for when you're trying to find ovulation or to confirm that you have ovulated is this slight rise in temperature. So why does our temperature rise anyways? Well, this temperature rise is a direct result of an increase in progesterone. So our menstrual cycle, we have a few different phases. There is the follicular phase, which starts off with menstruation, and then follicular phase, phase moves into the ovulatory phase, which is when we ovulate, and then after that is the luteal phase. So during our follicular phase, we have low progesterone levels. Um, after ovulation occurs, our progesterone levels will rise, um, and this is when we can see that, that um, our BBT levels, our basal body temperature, will increase as well. And then throughout the remainder of the the luteal phase from ovulation until before menstruation occurs again, then uh, basal body temperature will still be at a higher level. And this is due to progesterone now being released from that ruptured ovarian follicle, um, which turns into a corpus luteum and the corpus luteum produces progesterone. So the rise in temperature that we will see is a very slight. So for most women, the uh, before, before you ovulate, during the follicular phase, your basal body temperature will be 36.1 degrees Celsius to 36.4 degrees Celsius. Or if you're American, this is 97 degrees Fahrenheit to 97.5 degrees Fahrenheit. After you ovulate, this temperature is going to rise by only about half a degree. Whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, it's only going to increase about half a degree. So basal body temperature testing is going to tell you when you actually have ovulated. This is great because um, BBT testing is one of the only ways that we can do at home to confirm that we have actually ovulated. If you're someone who um, maybe you're doing other forms of predicting ovulation, but you actually don't know if you're actually ovulating, this would be the test to do to confirm if you actually are ovulating or not. So with that said, there is, um, there is a negative, the exact same thing can be considered a negative when it comes to basal body temperature testing, because if you are trying to predict ovulation, then this form of testing is not going to help you too much in predicting because it's not going to tell you before you've ovulated which some of the other tests will this test is only going to tell you after you've actually ovulated so to digress just a little bit um, this is when it's a very good idea or this is why it's a very good idea to combine a couple or a few of these different uh, ovulation predicting ovulation tracking, menstrual tracking sort of methods so that you can not only um, confirm that you are actually ovulating or not, but it'll also help you to better predict when you're going to ovulate and find out when your fertile window is. So definitely I'm gonna link down below all the different ways that you can test for ovulation and combining a couple of these or more is definitely gonna be your best option. 
So how do you track BBT? How do you track basal body temperature? First, you need a special thermometer. You can't use just any thermometer. You're gonna need a specific basal body temperature thermometer. And this thermometer is going to pick up those slight, slight variations. Secondly, you are going to need a very strict schedule when it comes to testing your BBT. So you're gonna track your cycle by testing your BBT at the exact same time every morning, if you can. And this is gonna be in the morning before you move around, before you get out of bed, drink water, anything. Um, so you wanna test your at rest temperature. So you definitely do not wanna be making any sudden movements or drinking anything or doing anything else. Basal body temperature tracking is extremely finicky and there are so many things that can affect it. Um, as I said, from just moving or drinking water or if you are sick or if you went to bed late last night or there's so many things that can affect this temperature because it is such a slight, slight temperature change. BBT can be tested using your basal body thermometer um, in three different ways. So orally, vaginally, or rectally. So whatever you decide to do, just stick to that one method. The rectal method is actually considered the most accurate. If you are using, or if you are testing the thermometer orally, then place it under your tongue in sort of the exact same spot every single time that you test. Do not use your basal body temperature um, under your armpit or any other sort of uh, temperature testing method because it's not going to be very accurate. You wanna be testing your BBT um, after three to four hours of continuous sleep. So if you wake up during the night or anything like that, or if you're working nights, um, you just wanna make sure that you've actually slept three to four hours, and this is actual sleeping, um, in order to track your body's temperature at rest. So if you do work at the night and you sleep during the day, then you wanna be testing this after you wake up during the day instead of in, in the morning, if that makes sense. Basically just make sure it is the same time whenever, however your schedule works out and make sure it is after you wake up, right when you wake up. So you're pretty much still in that at rest state. So once you get your temperature readings, you want to start tracking them. So the best, easiest way to track your readings is to use an app such as Fertility Friend. Um, and this you can type in your, your temperature every single day and it'll make an actual chart, an actual graph for you. So it's super easy to read. So I highly suggest using Fertility Friend. Apps like these usually also allow you to input other things. Um, so they'll let you input when you get your period. Um, they'll let you input when you have sex. You can also track other methods on these apps too. Um, I've heard tracking your cervical mucus is possible with the Fertility Friend app as well. So yeah, apps are amazing. Use them to your benefit. So besides using an actual basal body thermometer every single morning, there is another option that is uh, available to you, which is a lot easier. So if you really want to dedicate yourself to this basal body temperature testing, um, which is you know great for people with PCOS who can't use the urine ovulation strips, um, or you know maybe other conditions as well, um, basal body temperature testing is great to confirm that you're ovulating. So this is probably one of those testing that you do wanna do. But if you find that the whole um, thermometer reading is just too difficult for you, there is another option and it is fertility bracelets. So the one that I know specifically of is called AVA and this is basically just, I'm sure there's lots on the market as well, but there, you just wear this bracelet and it will track your temperature while you are sleeping. So that way it knows exactly when you're at rest. So if you have issues with you know waking up and getting out of bed and then remembering, oh, I have to, uh, I have to check my temperature, but now it's too late because you've already gotten out of bed and things like that, then buying a fertility bracelet like Ava is going to be so much easier. It's going to track your temperature for you and yeah, just make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to basal body temperature tracking. 
I will link Ava down below in the description so you can check out that product as well. So then how can basal body temperature tracking and charting help you when it comes to trying to get pregnant? So how can basal body temperature charting and testing actually help with trying to conceive with predicting ovulation? So I did say that basal body temperature won't tell you when you're going to ovulate, but it will confirm for you when you have ovulated. So this in itself is a positive if you are the type of person who doesn't know if you actually are ovulating, but it can also be a negative if you are just a person who is just trying to figure out when you are going to ovulate during your cycle so that you can start having sex at the proper time. So if you don't yet know about fertile windows, then um, let me get into that to kind of describe for you why basal body temperature is kind of possibly considered a negative when it comes to discovering your fertile window and how we can turn it into a positive. So basically, once you ovulate, your egg is released from the follicle and your egg will survive for 12 to 24 hours before it starts to disintegrate and can no longer be fertilized. So basal bo body temperature is confirming that your egg has already released. So at that point, um, when you know your basal body temperature has spiked, uh, you have already ovulated, ovulation has already occurred. And at that point, if you start having sex right then, it actually could be too late in order to conceive. Um, and this is because your partner's sperm, once you have sex, the sperm can actually take up to 12 hours just to reach the egg. So by the time the sperm reaches the egg, the egg might already be disintegrating and it could be too late. So when it comes to predicting ovulation, we want to predict before ovulation will actually occur so that you can have sex at the correct time, which is before ovulation occurs. Um, so as I said, the egg only survives for 12 to 24 hours, but your partner's, your partner's sperm will survive within your reproductive system, within your uterus and fallopian tubes, which is where it needs to be. Um, it'll survive there for three to five days. So the idea is that you want to be having sex three to five days uh, every day or every second day before you ovulate so that once you do ovulate, there is already this buildup of sperm inside your fallopian tube so that when the egg is actually released, the sperm is right there and is able to fertilize it as soon as it is released. So this is why timing is so important and this is why it is important to know or to be able to pre predict before you are going to ovulate. So three to five days before you are going to ovulate is when you want to start having sex in order to conceive. So BBT is less of a predictor and more of a confirmer when it comes to ovulation, but we can use it to be a predictor as well. So what do we have to do to do that? So first of all, you do need to have a regular menstrual cycle. That is how this is gonna work the best way. Um, otherwise, if it's a little bit irregular, you can still do this. It's just gonna take months and months of tracking your actual cycle. So what you need to do, I'm sure it's becoming obvious by now, but um, you just need to follow your temperature cycles, um, use that Fertility Friend app so it gives you a chart of exactly, you know, your cycle days and what your temperature is for each cycle day and follow this pattern. Try to discover a pattern of, of figuring out, okay, my period is usually 28 days long and I know that my temperature usually rises on day 14. Um, sometimes it's a little bit before, sometimes it's a little bit after, but if you can see your chart over periods of cycles and cycles, then you can begin to predict um, when, what cycle day you do ovulate on. So using basal body temperature as a way of prediction, this is going to take at least a cycle or two of tracking and in order to be able to predict. Um, so it is not the fastest way to get pregnant, but it is a great way if, um, yeah, it is a great way, it is a very accurate way to uh, confirm that you are ovulating and to eventually be able to predict when you're going to ovulate in future cycles. 
So just to reiterate, when once you have come up with a cycle day that you know you are going or you know you should be ovulating on that cycle day, each cycle, um, from that point when you are trying to conceive, what you want to be doing is having sex five, three to five days before that estimated predicted ovulation day um, in order to get sperm inside of yourself before you ovulate. When it comes to the frequency of sex during your fertile window, during this five, three to five day period, um, you want to be having sex once per day. You don't wanna have any more than that because that could affect your partner's uh, sperm count and quality. Um, or you could have sex every second day, especially if your partner has a low sperm count, then it could be more beneficial to wait every second day. So with all of that said, how effective and how accurate really is basal body temperature testing? So BBT test testing is extremely finicky and so that can um, contribute to uh, being inaccurate just sort of due to user error. So if you're using the thermometer but you forget to forget to test it right when you wake up and you know then you end up waking up or drinking something, then that's user error that could be affecting your test results. But if you instead you use something like the Ava bracelet where you don't have to worry about uh, testing by yourself when you wake up, then that can definitely increase um, increase the accuracy. But besides the actual testing itself, there are also other factors that can contribute to um, your basal body temperature being higher or lower at any given time, which can throw off your results. So things like this could be um, if you have if you're sick or if your, say, your schedule is all messed up for a period of time and you end up, you know, working nights some days and working days other days and, and your schedule is just all messed up, that can affect it as well. Also stress levels, drinking alcohol, having sex, all of these different things can affect your basal body temperature and affect your results when you test for it. But all in all, this is a very accurate way as long as there is no user error. Um, it can be a very accurate way to confirm that you have ovulated and it is a great option for women who can't use other tests like i mentioned before um, so P so women with pcos uh, can't really rely on urine tests that test for lh levels um, so testing your basal body temperature would be a great method for you um, it's great for anybody who needs to confirm that they have ovulated um, yeah, overall, it's a lot of women swear by using this method. And if you can um, make it even easier on yourself by using things like the Ava bracelet and by um, using the Fertility Friend app, um, things like that that are going to help you out, then it's just going to make the whole process even more easy for you and pleasant and, and accurate as well. But as always, it's great to combine, um, combine at least a couple different methods of tracking ovulation. So BBT is one of the best ways, definitely. Urine ovulation tracking is one of the best ways as well.